He later earned his bachelor's degree in business management. He has dedicated his life to serving his community. And this is one thing I did not know about him. I don't know how I knew. I didn't know. He was a firefighter, EMT, youth baseball coach, as well as serving on the Tavares City Council from 2009 to 2019 as mayor, vice mayor, and council member. Kirby is married and has one son who works in the family business. Kirby is the president and vice president of several family businesses. He has his own small business and is a former senior engineering manager for CenturyLink. Kirby has served on many boards, including but not limited to Career Source Central Florida, Children's Service Council, Early Learning Coalition, Elder Affairs Coordinating Council, Lake County League of Cities, Lake County MPO, Medical Examiner's Office Oversight Committee, Parks, Recreation and Trails Advisory Board, Upper Oklahoma Basin Working Group, and the Tavares Economic <laughs> Development Team. Mom, did you know all this? <laughs> and for fun, if he doesn't have enough to do, for fun, Kirby and his family like to swim and boat in the lakes use the trail and park systems and attend many festivals offered throughout Lake County. I'd like to welcome County Commissioner Kirby Smith. This is a misconception that's, that's always asked of us. 
the sheriff's office, the property appraiser, the tax collector, Parker Court, and the supervisor of elections. They are all duly elected officials who run their own operation. In your handout, there's a dollar bill bracket. This graphic shows how, how your money is spent on the dollar. Uh, you will notice that the constitutional offices take up 61 cents of your dollar that you pay up. Um, it also includes a, a copy of a map showing the five district commissioners. In each commissioner district, they serve in the areas in which is in their district. It also has my business card on it. It has the website. It has my personal cell phone number. Uh, I was hired by you, the citizens of Lake County. Uh, I'm very transparent. I hold office hours every Tuesday and Thursday in my office. I'm the only one that does that. I have my cell phone number on my business card, 352-434-4419. Call me anytime. I'm more than happy to come out and see you. I'm more than happy to uh, listen to what you want us to do as your county commissioner. Since being elected as a district three commissioner, I had a front row seat of some of the challenges and some of the great things that have occurred here in Lake County. And let me just explain a few of them. In November of 23, we unveiled a new digital veteran sign in front of the county administration building. I was very, it was, it was very important to me that we display this sign in a prominent location along with our Liberty Tree and our Go Board. Uh, before I became chairman, these were put off in the back and I said no more. We got to honor our veterans. So that's what we're doing. If you have not heard about our, if you not heard about our Liberty Tree, we plant a Liberty Tree every year. This year, uh, we're going to start putting it in schools. Uh, Utah High School uh, has requested a Liberty Tree in South Lake High School. I think it's South Lake High School. My mom is telling me I got to speak up. <laughs> Can y'all hear me okay? No, no, no. I can. I can. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> I know what to do, Kirby. We'll move the podium up a little bit. You can lower yourself because you're pretty tall right now. Ah. <laughs> 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 I need to start all over again. <laughs> so we, we unveiled a new veterans uh, wall, and it's for any veteran in Lake County. If you move to Lake County, please put your name on the wall. If you have a, a, a family member or friend who was born here in Lake County and serves Please put your name on the wall. We need to recognize these guys. They do so much for us. Uh, board shorts. Every Wednesday, I do board shorts. So these board shorts are to let people know what's going on here in Lake County, what it has to offer you. Whether you're a lifelong resident or you're brand new to Lake County, these things highlight things to do here in Lake County. Uh, you can view these board shorts on our county website or on my Facebook page. And I hope that you find these not only interesting, but informative as well. And as Ms. Price said, this week's board short is on George Fest. So go to our county website or go to my Facebook page and you can look up board shorts. Uh, and I put them on to various word of mouth, uses word of mouth, and all the word of mouth things. Uh, so. Go out there and look at them. They're, they're informative. They're two and a half minutes long. Uh, so it'd be nice. 
<laughs> when I started on the commission on commission board, our reserves were at nine percent. Think about that. Our reserves were at nine percent when I started in 2020. That really bothered me because I'm a big reserve guy. I think that if we have a catastrophic incident, we need to have some money to set aside to take care of that. Uh, so with some outside the box thinking and the support of the other commissioners, I was able to increase our reserves in three years from 9% to 19%. As you may or may not know, I'm a big technical school guy. Although I have my bachelor's degree, I also took welding at Lake Tech. Um, with my help and the support of the board of the Lake County Tavares, the city of Tavares, and Ms. Price mentioned this, Lake Tech and Lake County, along with the state, broke ground on their transportation and training hub in June of 2023. What this does is it helps not only us save money by having People come from Lake Tech over to the city of Terraria to work on ambulances, heavy equipment, cop cars, dump trucks. It, it gives them a skill that they can take throughout where they want to go. Lake Technical School, School is also expanding in South Lake County to assist the citizens in the southern half. And that's one of my big pushes. I wanted them, they're going to be down at Cagins Crossing. Uh, to help people who live in the South Lake County with the education they need to help them grow. Partnership between Lake County and Lake Tech and Lake Sumter State College to provide students, high school students, with culinary arts, aviation, drafting, electrical, construction, drones, there's going to be a board chart on drones, Umatilla High School is doing drone training right now um, for the future of our students here in Lake County so they can expand. You don't have to have a college education to make a good living. I know a lot of electricians, I know a lot of plumbers that do very, well, i got to pay them, they do very, very well. So let's talk about partnerships. I'm a big public-private partner guy. Uh, I think that they call it three P's, P3 or PPP, public-private partnership. Um, when we first, when I first started, uh, we used to have our own warehouse for all of our equipment and all of our tools for our trucks. Well, we partnered with Napa. And we also partnered with Enterprise on a truck lease program, which is a true example of a <coughs> partnership that has saved Lake County hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. One of my goals when I started as a county commissioner was to help protect our natural resources, our lakes. Our lakes are one of the finest economic driving forces we have here in Lake County. You may or may not know that we have a facility called the MERF. It's a nutrient reduction facility on the north end of Lake Apopka at the AB Canal that helps clean up. The Nile River is not the only river that goes north. All of our lakes go north, so all of our rivers go north. So the AB Canal runs north into Lake Beauclair, Lake Carlton, Lake Dora, Lake Eustace. Lake Griffin and an off the Apawa. Uh, we did another public-private partnership with a company called Woodard and Kern. Woodard and Kern is professionals in water management. With their expertise, they have saved us over four hundred thousand dollars last year alone and increased productivity by seven by fifty percent, which is a huge undertaking. We no longer have county employees working this. We have a private company that has saved us, the citizens of Lake County, over $400,000 the first year and increased productivity by 50%. Wow. Another thing I've been working on is a public-private partnership with the Golden Triangle Regional Park. It's over there off of David Walker Road. It's getting ready to break ground very soon here in 2024. And it is a partnership between 
the Central Florida YMCA, City of Tavares, and Lake County. I work with our legislators to part partner to enhance our public safety, both new fire stations, new fire trucks, and our sheriff. I go to Tallahassee at least twice a year to help push our legislative priorities. And as Ms. Price said, we've got to pay, we're paying the taxes anyway. We might as well get as much back as we can uh, here in Lake County because if we don't get it, Miami Day's going to get it. Yeah. Or Orange County's going to get it. And I don't want them to get it because they're not like us. They're not ready. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Yoakum touched on roads. We've increased the impact fees for roads up to 95%. Uh, so when developers come in, they have to pay their fair share now <clears throat> to help our infrastructure. We also have program $50 million over the next five years to help our infrastructure and our roads. Now, um, it may seem like a lot and it may seem like a short time. I don't think we're going to be able to get there because of the vendors and the people working the roads. There's just not enough people doing it right now. So uh, you may see a road start and it stops it's because it, we're having either <coughs> vendor issues or we're having issues with material, uh, but we are constantly working on roads. Uh, there's a new road called 516 down in South Claremont. It's going to be connecting 27 to 429, and it's going to be the first in the state to have an automatic battery charging thing for your electric <laughs> Sean Park uh, strikes. Not my idea. Oh. <laughs> And if you really want to get in touch with your state representative, um, Representative True now, who's a Florida House representative running for uh, Senate, he, his office is right here in Tavares at the Ag Center. Call him up, go visit him, he's a very nice guy. Um, he's, he's a farmer, he's like us, uh, he works hard and he does things for all of us here in Lake County. That's why I'm here. Um, if you've noticed, I put my card on the table to help me get on the ballot. I would appreciate that you sign that card for me so I can get on the ballot and hopefully serve you again for the next four years. Um, I'm not a long talker, uh, but I'm here to answer any questions you may have, as long as they're not tough. Mommy can't ask me any questions. Yes, ma'am. I'm not. I just moved to Florida six weeks ago from Kansas City, Missouri, basically. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Love it here. I'm so happy to be moving to another red state. Um, but I did have a question because I'm not familiar with the process where candidates get on the ballot by petition like this. And somebody mentioned that there are two ways to get on the ballot. One is you pay this fee or something mm -hmm. to the county or to someone and it could be quite stiff. And that the other way is by petition and so <coughs> is not being familiar with the process. What would be the fee that the candidates would have to pay? And second of all, how many signatures do you have to collect to get on the ballot? So the signatures on the on the ballot, um, I believe it's 3,500 signatures, uh, which means that you have to get about 5,000 signatures and they kick a bunch of them out. And and the, the if you don't want to go to a, the petition route, then it's about $4,500 to get on the ballot. And is that across all offices? It's different. It's, it's, it depends on um, the salary pay. they get. It's a certain percentage of your annual pay, so the sheriff would pay more, um, tax collector would pay more, state representatives would pay less. So, thank you. Yes, sir. Commissioner, uh, the county recently wrapped up uh, a rather lengthy interaction with a group called Strong Towns. Did anything positive or negative come from that interaction, that collaboration? So Strong Towns is a is a um, is an idea on how to get blighted areas back up to where they want to go. Um, there is some. 
good ideas there. Uh, we are in the midst of trying to protect our rural areas. Uh, as you know, Lake County is growing. It's the, past, it's the third fastest growing county in the state. Um, we are trying our best to protect the rural nature of this county. Uh, one that I grew up in, I used to go hunting out in my backyard. I can't do that anymore because there's houses all around it. Um, but strong towns and the rural aspect of it is you can have a piece of land and clump things together and have a bunch of open space instead of just a bunch of houses everywhere. So yes, it's a great idea. It hasn't been implemented fully yet. Uh, we're also going through what's called a JPA to each city so they can set boundaries and rules on how they want to grow and where the protected area, where the protected rural areas are. Um, we have uh, Wakaba protection area, Lake Apopka protection area, and the Green Swamp uh, protection area right now. Yes, ma'am. Set aside that it will not be built on green space. Is that familiar to you? I didn't, I didn't quite hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can't hear you. So, so I can't hear. Okay. <laughs> My mom yelled at me too much about the key. Uh, <laughs> the land set aside that is, has been named green space in Lake County. That's what I'm talking about. So currently, right now, Lake County has about 33% of land that's in conservation <coughs> right now. Okay, that's the land I'm talking about. How is that maintained? Will it ultimately have walking paths and uh, public access <laughs> so it can be used by the public and not just become a pasture? That's a great question. I had a meeting, I had a meeting um, today, what was that? I had a meeting yesterday with, no, Monday with St. John Water Management District over in Morelda Island Area 4. It's a, it used to be a, a birding place, a conservation place uh, that they had shut down. Uh, I've asked them to reopen it. Uh, I'm a firm believer that if we as taxpayers here in Lake County spend money on land, we as taxpayers need to use that land, whether it's passive or active. Um, I'm a big believer in passive parks. I'm a big believer in active parks. Uh, not everybody can go to Disney World, but they can certainly pack a picnic basket and go down to Wooten Park and enjoy the day with their family. That's what's important. So, yes, we maintain a lot of the parks, um, both passive and active, and so does the state. Yes, sir. Kirby, at the recent board meeting, you had a presentation by one of the bond salesmen uh, and the board approved them going out doing a survey about floating another another fifty million dollar bonds to buy more public lands but as I pointed out a lot of those were never developed they don't even have money for a parking lot and are you going to uh, it, why go do that if they're not going to be available and you just said you'd like to have it available for people to use so what, what Vance is talking about is it's going to be a, refer, a referendum where you get to decide if you want to have a millage rate added to your taxes to buy uh, park lands or passive parks. And as soon as we do that, and if you agree with it, I certainly agree with it because it helps protect all of our rural areas. Uh, the county will maintain them. Uh, we'll have either a grass parking lot or uh, sub base parking lot, just like over there at uh, Green Mountain. You ever been to Green Mountain? Yeah. And Ferndale is a wonderful, wonderful passive park. Any other questions? Well, I'll ask another one. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the city is constantly annex land in, and so then they're building houses like Mount Dora, and other places, and yet the county has county roads that the county, and I'm a county taxpayer, not city, I, I kind of resent the fact that the county keeps subsidizing these cities by maintaining roads because the city collects taxes on both sides of those county roads, 
or state roads, and they do not contribute to the maintenance of those roads. Is there anything that can be done to fix that so that you protect the county taxpayers from having to subsidize the city? So would you like to tell everybody what my vote was yesterday? I forget which one it was. <laughs> Living Avenue. You voted against that? I voted against it. Okay. I don't think the county residents should be paying for a roundabout that's going to be located in the middle of Mount Dora. But how? That makes sense. To me. How many? But the so others. I voted against. That. I got outvoted. Yeah. But, a million dollars. You know, a million dollars for a roundabout. That's right. And it in the paperwork it said that. The county's general fund may have to support it because they may not have enough impact fees. So hopefully that's going to be paid out of the impact fees that um, we just raised on the developer. But I, I'm with you. Uh, I'm also working with the cities that if, if they have 70% of the right of way and we have 30% the road needs to be redone, the city pays 70%, the county pays 30 Totally fair. If the county has 70% and the city has 30, then the county pays 70% and the city pays 30. I'm working with the city of Tiberias, I'm working with the city of Leesburg, I'm working with the city of Claremont, Groveland. I have not hit Lady Lake yet. And I haven't hit Mineola in a crazy yes, yes. way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Where that roundabout will be in Mount Dora. Yeah. <laughs> Avenue. You know where Barber's Bar used to be? I, I know where Lemon comes out onto uh, 441. Is it another part of Lemon? Another? No, it, it, they're, building, they're building a big subdivision um, right there on the highway. They're wanting to use Lemon as a collector road. Okay. And the collector road, instead of having to stop signs, they'll have a roundabout. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Can't hear you. County Road 44 is a nightmare from Eustis to Leesburg. There's no traffic lights. Uh, there's one by Mid Florida, and then um, you know down by the post office. But like we live in by um, I forgot what the name of the subdivision is. Anyway, they're they're building and building and building, and there's one way in and Harbor Shores. We live in Harbor Shores. There's one way in and one way out. That's it. Leaper. And we have hundreds of new houses that went up in there. And we get out to, to County Road 44. If you're turning left, you might as well figure 10 minutes. Yeah. Is so, there anything that can be done okay. about that? Yes. Yeah, so, so we have um, contacted FDOT. They're doing a study on 44 right now. Are they? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Um, also, I talked to uh, Senator Baxley when I was up there two weeks ago about uh, 44 coming out of Eustis going into DeLand. Um, we are starting to become an area where if there's issues within the state, hurricane, people come here because we not only are we the safest place to live in, in Florida, but we're also the best place to live in Florida, in my opinion. Um, so uh, that's being worked on. I'm also working on plantations. Somebody here from plantations? I thought someone was here from plantations. Plantations, they're getting a flashing, uh, fixing to come to a signal light. That's happening. It took me a year and a half to get that done. FDOT moved way slower than government. I don't know why. And then uh, I'm work also working uh, with FDOT. The Secretary of District 5 with uh, Legacy of Leesburg and trying to get them either a warning light or a signal in that area. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, I don't know if they say yes, I don't know when, when it would happen, but at least the conversation is starting to happen. We'll take one more question. Do you uh, notice that on Grove Street and Eustis, there and that little small little plot of land they're building, like one-bedroom cottages. Do you know what they're for? I do not. I do not. I should find out, but I, I, don't, I don't know well, where. I can find out, too, but I mean, we just yeah. noticed that those are popping up. It's behind the Methodist Church.
just yeah, I, I don't know. So don't forget to um, don't forget to look at the board shorts. I do one every week. Uh, they're informative. Been, they're about all kinds of things here in Lake County that you may or may not know. Um, I certainly appreciate the invitation. I um, appreciate the questions. Again, if you have anything for me, 352-434-4419. I'm in my office every Tuesday and Thursday. You can call and set up a meeting with me. I'd be more than happy to meet anybody that wants to meet me. So thank you very much and thank you for your time.